What's up, Sizzle Nation? Putin here from the Sizzle Offshore. Darcy and I are super excited to bring you this video. First off, we're going fishing, inshore fishing in Stewart, Florida. We're gonna show you some great tips and techniques so you can catch more fish on the troll when other ways may not be working out for you that well. Then Darcy's gonna clean up these fish. We caught a bunch of spaz mackerels and a bunch of other fish too. And then we're gonna go back to the kitchen and I'm gonna show you a great, easy recipe that's gonna be nice and fast and also super good for your diet, all right? We're gonna have a ton of fun. Come along with us. Let's get right to it. Always match the size of your hook to the size of your bait. Got a little finger mullet here. This is a six-aught mustad circle hook. And you can see, I'm just gonna leave his mouth open, go through that top upper lip. There's a little soft spot, like right in the middle of the nose. And always take that little piece of scale off because you won't lose the fish that eats this bait. But there you go, he's ready to go. Oh, got him. What is that, small snook? Jeez. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's a Cuda. You sucker. Oh. <laughs> I saw him eat it. Set the circle hook on that snook. I thought it was a snook. I thought it was a bear snook, 100%, but it's a barracuda. It's actually a nice eating size barracuda right there in shore. All right, first fish of the day. Just broke off the skunk. Definitely thought that was a snook, 100%. Well, that's why it just goes to show you, you just never know what you're going to catch out here on one of those mullet I caught this morning in the cast net. And you can see the hook right in the corner of the mouth. Perfect, I watched him grab it and I could see the mullet flashing down there sideways getting swallowed by this fish. So I'm gonna try, get him off real quick and be quiet because I'm still working these docks and you don't wanna spook other fish. Come on. All right guys, there is our barracuda. And I also just wanted to let you know that this video is brought to you by Inst There is our beautiful Barracuda, and I just want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Hair Club. And I'm going to link all their information down below. Super excited. They're my newest sponsor, and I love using their products for my very long hair. All right, let's catch some more fish. All right, we're trolling to another spot, and we just caught a Spanish mackerel, keeper size. So, uh, Put the lines back out and camera on this time. Slow down. All right, fish on. Is it on? Yeah, it is. We've been doing a lot of trolling lately, but um, we have a ton of trolling videos and short trolling. We kill it. Darcy's got another fish, looks like a little jack. I'll post one of those videos up here. If you guys see trolling is a great videos. way to cover a lot of water too and find out like where the fish are holding, especially if you're having a tough day of fishing. And oh, we all have tough days of fishing, that's why it's Not fishing. Us. But covering water like that, another Spanish. Wow, another Spanish. They're here. Well, that's a bigger one. Yes, they're here. We can troll up and down yes. here with the Spanish. We are going to load up on Spanishes right now. Careful. Beautiful. Nice they are Spanish. so good. Delicious to eat. Baby. Careful. Use pliers Careful. Those, <laughs> I almost got trouble hooked. Careful. All right. right around this bend. What? Right around this bend. Dude, they're crushing this lure. Love it. Another one. I have a new favorite lure this season. I got to show our new favorite lure. It's a shad wrap for fresh water. I bought for trolling in Lake Ida for clown knives. And we started using it out here, and it started getting hit more than our favorite lure, more than our favorite usuri. Yeah! Woo! They're getting bigger, they're getting bigger. And they're puking up, uh, puking up like little minnows and stuff. But yeah, that's the little lure right there. Oh, he's a bloody mess already. Woohoo! But yeah, that's the lure. That's a Rapala. What is it, Brian? I think it's called a Shad Wrap. Rapala Shad Wrap. Look at that. He just puked out these little minnows that just came out of them. That's what they're feeding on inside. And they're just crushing this little thing with a little red lip. Gets it down real deep. I actually think that lip gets it about six to eight feet down, which is perfect. Um, and just moving, you know, trolling at a little faster pace. Right, Brian? Yes. Nice. Right, when you're trolling for Spanish mackerel or any sort of fast fish, like a bluefish, Spanish mackerel, whatever, you're going to go a little faster. All right, now for snook and tarpon, they tell you for snook, you're going to go really, really slow. And tarpon, tip. you're going to barely move. She's bleeding them. Rip, yeah, rip their gills out right away. I met one of you guys, one of my fans, that watches the channel a couple of weeks ago, and he caught some Spanish mackerels, and he said they were quite tasty. 
once he figured out what they were. But they're really good, just make sure you bleed them and they'll be extra good. And Darcy promises not to talk next to that darn two-stroke again. <laughs> it's only this, this reel. Only this freaking lure. Only this lure. This is insane. So basically we're just trolling back from deep in Manatee Pocket on a, on a nice, uh, well we caught that Barracuda, trolling back just past the ramp, back to, you know, to the four corners or whatever, or the crossways. Just have lures out, you know, Darcy loves to troll and just start picking up Spanish Max. So now we're doing a couple passes, catching Max on back every pass. Back to back to back to back, there's fish after fish. And this is a Cuda. Wow. No, Senate Barracuda. The Senate Barracuda. That's the biggest one we've ever caught. Wow, check that out. They only want this color, this gold color and red lip. Literally in the last 10 minutes, we've hooked four fish on this one and the other rods, which I have two other baits out, are not getting touched. Now, if you're not familiar with that fish, it's a Senate Barracuda, of course, relating to the regular Barracuda. And, They're uh, unregulated. Unregulated, and Darcy will put that in a trap or we'll eat it. We, had it, we did a catch and cook before, and they're pretty good. And Barracudas are delicious. Again, for Cigatera, I know you're gonna ask me that next. Just eat the small ones, under five pounds. We eat Darcy's third generation Miamian. She's been eating barracudas her whole life. Another one, he's jumping. It's another Spanish or a Cuda. Not exactly sure. We're just crushing it. And we got another Senate. Woo! Senate Slay, get that loud. Crushing it. All right, guys, we got another fish in the boat this time, another species, and it's a beautiful snook. Small little snook, he's so pretty and so healthy, just really, really nice to see that. Look how pretty he is. Wow, Whoa. super golden and just cool looking. Look how cool, maybe yeah. with the sunlight. Circle hook, circle hook right in the corner of the mouth, doing its job. Relax. Ow. Relax. There he is. That is a nice one. Pretty fish. We just saw a bunch of little snook popping everywhere, so that was really cool. And I'm seeing some bait, so I think I want to go ahead and try to catch that, because that's what they're feeding on. Let's let him go. Should be totally fine. Yep. There he goes. No. Oh. Got a snook. What, baby? Got a snook. Nice. A little bigger. Nice. Nice fish. Good job. No! What happened? I mean, nothing. What I did mean, you want me to do? I don't I know. I asked you I mean, like three times, you don't respond. I mean, I... All right, guys, we're trolling in the inlet. We got a fish on. We just doubled that rod over. <laughs> we're going pretty fast into the current, so we doubled our rod over good. Yeah. So we're doing, we are having a tough fight a little bit, like with the live bait. We hit so many spots today, and a lot of them just did not produce. So we decided to go back to trolling because you know what? We caught so many fish in such a short period of time earlier this morning trolling. So we're now gonna bring in this fish. I also wanted to mention my sister, Megan. Um, I know you guys are curious about Megan and how she's doing, but let me get this fish landed first. Now we found the spot in the river where fish are biting and we got a nice Jack Cabal on the boat. But as of right now, 12 days later after Megan's accident, she is she is still unconscious and it's just a matter of, we're not really sure when she's going to wake up. It could be hours, it could be days, it could be weeks, it could be months, it could be, you know, we're just not sure. And we don't know the brain damage or any extent of her damage until she, it does wake up. So this is like a normal process and we're just patiently waiting for her. You can see this guy just made a bloody mess. He was hooked good, not going anywhere. But again, I'm gonna link, you know, the GoFundMe down below if you wanna help them. You know, Megan has a long road ahead of her and she's not out of the woods yet. And her husband Isaiah is getting foot surgery this week. And I am going to visit very, very soon. So, but I'll give you guys more of an update. So please pray for Megan, Meg Sizzle, Meg Solo, whatever you want to call her, Meg. Um, she goes by a lot of names on this channel. But please continue to pray for my sister because this is just a terrible, tragic accident. And I'm praying she wakes up real soon. All right, Darcy, it was a great day in the water here in Stewart. Yes. Nothing, we caught. Go ahead. I was going to say, it wasn't like nothing too crazy weird catches today or anything like that, but we had a great day. Caught a lot of fish. Yeah, we caught uh, a bunch of ladyfish. Yeah, they're actually buried in there. Senate Barracuda. Yep. What else did you catch, Sizzle? 
And we got all those Spanish Macs. Oh, the Spanish Macs. You know, that that's we're gonna eat those. We're gonna eat those. We're gonna do a captain cook actually, Darcy and I were talking. They're delicious. And, uh, you know, not a lot of, sometimes people don't eat those, but they're delicious. And it's actually a great Super spot good. over here, uh, which we're gonna go to later in the year and do an, probably do another catch and cook. But yeah. uh, I'll show you a quick way to cook those up real nice. Let's get to it. Let's get home. Yep. Clean them up and cook them up. Let's for lunch. Be nice light lunch. We are back at the house. It's the next day because I was totally exhausted. We had a really long day on the water yesterday, but we got our delicious Spanish mackerels here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fillet them up real quick and put it in. We'll cook them in the house. And this is. A, a keeper fish. There's not like the jumbo giant ones that come here in the winter time, but they're going to be here real soon. Regardless of the size, they are just one of the tastiest critters out there and they're really, really easy to fillet. They're actually, I would consider them one of the easiest fish to fillet, but also one of the most difficult because their skin is so soft. They're like, they're very similar to a kingfish, so it's tough to fillet. Um, and I'll show you when we're skinning it too, it's difficult because the skin is like paper thin. So it's a little bit of tough and it takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get the hang of it. Just run that knife down the backbone. Filet knife, of course, doing its job. I just sharpened it with a 10 inch steel over there. And we got that beautiful filet off. Flip it over, same exact thing. But you can see I'm just making these cuts nice and easy. There's no going through giant scales like snapper and um, any other tough fish like redfish and triple tail and all that good stuff. So. But this fish is so good, especially when it's fresh. So now we're just gonna run that blade back the other way. And Spanish mackerel don't get as big as kingfish, but they're in the mackerel family, of course. And I think a big, like a giant Spanish mackerel is about seven, seven pounds. That's a big Spanish mackerel. And they'll be here in waves in the winter time. So it's gonna be exciting catching them. Schools and schools of fish just hang out off Stewart and people love to just sit there and catch them all day long. All right, so you can see we're getting off this last side here. And also the holidays are coming up, so just go down to the description below and check out all the information, that all the stuff that I sell. A lot of stuff I hand make myself. You can see the fish hook pendant necklace on my chest, sterling silver. Um, you can also see the fish hook and anchor bracelets here. And just a heads up, I do I'm not selling this, this uh, key. <laughs> I know somebody's gonna ask me about that. My sister Megan gave it to me and I'm wearing it to uh, support her. As you know, she's in the hospital right now. So I am not selling that. Do not ask for that. <laughs> I don't have any more, I'm sorry. But um, besides that, calendars are up. There's apparel on the website and all that good stuff. All right, so I see you got our, our two beautiful fillets right here. Now here's the tricky part, is skinning it. I'm gonna use the same knife, the seven inch Smith fillet knife. But when you get down to the skin, instead of staying right on the skin, you're just gonna rip right through it. Try to turn your knife up. Instead of like pointing it angled down, just turn your knife up as you go down. I know it sounds weird, but you're gonna have to do that a little bit and sacrifice a little bit of the meat on the skin so you're not eating all this, all the skin or getting it stuck on your meat. So I kind of angled that up a little bit. And you can see there's a little bit of meat there that we sacrificed, but at the same time, I didn't break through the skin. I did a pretty good job there. And these fish do have bigger bloodlines, but since we went ahead and bled this fish, there's not a lot of a bloodline left. A bunch of pin bones up here by the head. And then you have two beautiful Spanish mackerel loins. I got a little bit of stomach bones right here that I'll just whack out, no big deal. And then you got two delicious Spanish mackerel loins right there. That is gonna make a tasty, tasty meal. And they are very oily. They're great smoked. They're great pan fried. They're great however you like them, but they are just one of the top grade Spanish mackerels out there. All right, so I gotta knock out the other side of this fish, and then I'm gonna bring the fish into the house for cooking with pudding, and he's gonna cook a delicious meal. Thanks, Darcy, for cleaning up those Spanish macs real nice and easy. She's so good at that. The fish look like, <laughs> like she's a professional fish cleaner. But uh, welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Puddin. And unfortunately, Darcy's not even here. Uh, so you only, you only got Puddin. Darcy went to Georgia like immediately after flaying those fish uh, by plane or whatever. <laughs> not that that matters. To go visit Megan, who of course is uh, still uh, not awake in hospital. So Darcy will be right back. But uh, I am cooking these fish. So when the cat's away, the mice do play. I'm gonna be drinking up. No, I'm just kidding. I'm a little sip for lunch here, and I just made something really simple, guys. You know, we got a lot going on. I'm supposed to be going to Grand Isle on Sunday, but they're gonna hit by a hurricane, so we'll see what's going on with that. And uh, of course, she went to Georgia in the hospital with Megan and all this kind of great stuff. So uh, let me show you what I did here. I just marinated it 
with this uh, dressing I had in the refrigerator. Everything I just took out of the refrigerator for this. I didn't go to the store or anything. And I just marinated that in the refrigerator for like half an hour. And then I took it out and I just threw it on a tray, sprayed it down with some Pam or whatever and put it in the oven at 350 for like 15 minutes and cooked up in two seconds. Then I decided, you know, I didn't want to make a sandwich or anything. I, I just decided, again, I'm on a diet. I'm just gonna make a nice bowl. So I decided just to make it like a salad bowl. So I'm gonna start with just some salad. Again, I'm just using stuff from my refrigerator. And this is from Costco, this is organic salad wrap. I really just love these. And I got some nice, I'll just put a bit of lettuce in there. Kind of just using up what I have. And they come with some nice crunchies. I'll just throw the rest in there. Some cheese they added in there, boom, boom. And then I cut up some carrots and some broccoli. I got some nice uh, avocado I'm gonna put on top. So I like, to like, I like to put it in a bowl like this and get it mixed up really good. And this is a great tip to save on your diet is that if you put it in like this and stir it up kind of separately in your bowl, you can also just eat out of a Tupperware. But you put it in here and then you stir it up real good and that will help you to use only a little bit of dressing. This will save you calories with the dressing. All right, so you get it all mixed up here good in a big bowl. You can't do it in a regular bowl. It just doesn't work out. All right, so I got my salad all done. The, the fish finished, and I actually put it in the refrigerator for a little bit because no one wants hot fish on their bowl, right, or on their <laughs> salad. So I'm putting it up in a regular bowl now. I'm just gonna put some of this fish just right on top. No big deal. Make it delicious. It looks great, it's nice and dietetic. I'm gonna take those avocados I, I cut, put a couple of those on the side. And you know, so I'm all set now. You know, I just got a beautiful little lunch here. I'm gonna eat it up, I'm gonna wash it down with a beer. Uh, you know, then I'm gonna go back to work and uh, you know, just take care of my responsibilities when my girlfriend's away and, uh, and just do the family thing, right? It's all good. So uh, that's really it guys. Again, not making a big deal out of it. But uh, this fish, you know, Darcy mentioned the skin. And how you prepare a fish, it, does, it just depends on how you want to cook it, right? You could cook it whole, you could leave the skin on, you could leave the skin off. On this one, you can actually eat the skin if you want, okay? We don't usually do that, but you can do that. So you just leave the skin on if you want. It has nice healthy fats in there, for, which is real good for you. So that's it. I'm gonna get right down to it. Uh, enjoy the rest of my day. And until next time, guys, follow your dreams and keep on catching.